Today, I'm speaking with Ed Herr, who is the president slash CEO of Hers Food, Inc. Thank you for speaking with us today. You're welcome, Karen. Let's start by explaining how this all began. Take us on a journey from when Hers first began to where the company is today. Yeah. Well, our company, our company started in 1946. Uh, it was founded by my father, and he was uh, 21 years old. He uh, passed away uh, three and a half years ago, so he's no longer around. But he was um, uh, he was the, uh, he was 87 years old when he passed, and he he was the man behind hers. And uh, he was working on his dad's farm, and he was in charge of raising the chickens, and he had. 2,000 laying hens in this big building. And the, the deal with his dad was that in those days you had to work on the family farm until you were 21 years old. And then when you turned 21, you could go do something else. And for your pay, you got a used car. So that, that, that was kind of your contribution to the family. So when he turned 21, he said, you know, I am, I am really thankful that I had a chance to work on a farm, but I really want to do something where I'm around more people. Like these chickens don't talk to me. And so he found an ad in the Lancaster newspaper. We started right up the road here. And the ad was for a company called Verna's Potato Chip Company. It was for sale for $1,750. It was a one person, Verna, operation and basically, he, he bought this company for $1,750, and he got a couple of big black kettles and a little machine that sliced the potatoes and some tins to put them in and stuff like that, and a 1936 Dodge panel truck. And he started in business. And so he was engaged to my mother at the time, and so he and she was working for a lawyer in Lancaster. So he would make chips during the day by hand, and and then he would put them into these tins, and then he would pick her up at night. And on their dates, they would sell these chips door to door in in downtown Lancaster. And so, and sometimes they would make it into the big time, and they'd take a truckload uh, in that 36 panel truck. They'd take a truckload to the market, and they'd sell the chips. Um, to, to the to the people at the market. So that's how it all started. Very interesting. Uh, you, your brother, and father have worked so hard to build the HERS brand. And this interview will be viewed by business students throughout the region. Yeah. What has been your greatest motivation and inspiration to constantly come up with new innovative product ideas from year to year season to season mm -hmm. to provide snack food products that are considered the best in the country? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's a good question because uh, in our industry, uh, new products are very important. Innovation is very, very important. Um, I have been uh, known to call it snackertainment sometimes. <laughs> so if, if you think about our products are um, very tasty, very entertaining. It's also something to do. So um, people eat our products for a reward, uh, for an accompaniment to a sandwich, for an accompaniment to a, a, a game that's on television or a movie. Mm -hmm. But but basically, people that that buy our products want want to be entertained. Like they they want an experience. You know. So just like anything else. You know, whether it's going out to dinner or something, you want to try something different. At least most people do. So we have to, we, we, we have to keep coming up with new products. So that whole process uh, in our company um, uh, is is something that we're all very involved in. My brother and I still sit in on R and D meetings and and R and D synergy meetings with, with manufacturing and marketing and sales and try to come up with ideas. We, we, we go to taste tests and, and we become part of that. And then we have, 
We have a great R&D team that's, uh, you know, seven or eight people. That's all they do is work with our equipment, trying to come up with new, new ways of making products. And then we have great seasoning suppliers, partners in the business that, that make the barbecue and the sour cream and all. And they're constantly working on new flavors that they want to bring in and, and show us. And sometimes we give them direction and we say, hey, you know, we want some, uh, you know, ghost pepper flavored chips or we want you to do a honey butter or something like that. And so, so we can use their innovation team to partner with our team to come up with new products. But it's, it's one, of our, one of our top three initiatives in our company. Well, you talked about being hands-on with the, the process. What is the best part of your job as the CEO slash president? Well, I mean, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit like my dad. The, the best part of my job is making friends. Like, I love people. And, um, you know, it's, I, I always tell people that related to that, the flip side is the most frustrating part of my job is when you get so busy that you don't have time. You feel like you don't have time for the people that you care the most about, um, including your own family and, and friends. And, but, but more, you know, with regard to business, you know, you have, you have great people in the company and, and you don't get enough time with them. You know, so that's, that's my highlight. You know, I like, I like meeting new customers. I like meeting people in the community. Um, I like getting to know the people that work for us and what ideas they have, how we can, how we can do things better. It's the people, yeah. You have been very successful. What are, or what do you consider the key components to being a success in business for yourself as well as for other entrepreneurs? Yeah, well, first of all, Success is relative, right? I mean, uh, yeah, we've we've grown a business here, uh, thanks to a lot of good people. Uh, so it's obviously not me. Uh, I'm part of the team. I would say that um, there's a couple things that come to my mind. Uh, one is that I think, um, as far as my dad and and my mother was a big part of the business too. I think. Uh, one, one of the cornerstones of our business is hard work. You know, I can remember growing up, you know, my, my parents taught us the value of hard work. And not only the value of it, but the appreciation for it. Like, it's good to work hard. It makes you feel good. Um, it helps you learn. Uh, helps you sleep good, eat good, all those kind of things. So hard work is essential. And, 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 and so I guess I grew up with this idea that that hard work is fun. You know, like I remember sometimes, sometimes I'd rather work than play, you know, it's just, but, but um, obviously you have to have balance with that too, but, but hard work is one thing. And then I think, um, I think integrity is really important. And uh, that's, a, that's a big piece of it. And, and the other piece I alluded to at the beginning there is, is humility. You know, I, I think that it's really good for people to be what we say around here, to be learners, to always be asking questions, to always think that somebody else can help you and it's not all about you, and to work collaboratively. You know, it's really important today to not have silos, but, but to work together. So I think a humble spirit that says, how can I do better? You know, we're good, but we need to be better. We need to be smarter. We need to be more efficient. We need to be, et cetera, et cetera. So that's top of mind. From a managing perspective, in regards to the overall operations of the company, what are some challenges to overseeing such a large corporation, and how have you successfully managed those challenges? Yeah. Well, uh, probably. Uh, um the, the, the biggest challenge I alluded to already, and that is, it, it's hard to find time to um, to be with the people in your organization that make the most difference. So, um, one one challenge that that's uh, a cousin to is time management, making sure that you're uh, working on priorities that um, are for the good of 
the whole organization, not just priorities that, you know, things that you like to do or things that you're good at, but um, working on priorities. And, you know, there's a big thing in the industry these days. Uh, we call it less is more. Some people say fewer, bigger. But what's happening is the world is moving so fast and there's so many things thrown at us from, from different uh, 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 communication sources that everybody's so busy. What we need to do is make sure that the things we're working on are really the right things that we're working on. So there again, prioritizing, um, making sure that we're, we're choosing, you know, uh, like, like in our sales area, we have what we call big bets. And so we're choosing three or four things. Instead of introducing 20 new products, let's introduce three or four really good ones and really execute on getting them out there and marketing them and that sort of thing. So. Um, prioritizing, uh, another thing that's uh, incredibly important today is productivity, is uh, cutting cost, um, being the most efficient organization you can be, and that's hard work. And it takes a lot of good communication and a positive spirit, and um, so that, that's another one. And then the other one we, we, we talked about is managing innovation, you know, just making sure we're creative, making sure we're on the cutting edge, making sure we're learning. Uh, who can help us with that. Uh, those, those are my top three. In regards to human resources, when hiring new administrators and staff members, what is the criteria that you insist upon in a potential candidate? Yeah, well, um, tying in with hard work, we're looking for, for people who are energetic. And then, uh, you know, Depending on the job, experience is always important. Um, you know, somebody that's, uh, uh, you know, learned how to do what we're doing from another source mm -hmm. and can bring us from is, you know, what's the educational background and what's, what's the, uh, the academic um, piece of that puzzle. And, um, and then, and then uh, beyond those top three probably, um, for me personally, I, I like to hire people who are, uh, who have a positive attitude, who are transparent, and um, and and who you feel like, as soon as you meet them, you know, you know, like I know this person. Uh, I don't like, I don't like when people hold back and there's like smoke and mirrors. On it. And I find out six months from now who you really are. You know that sort of thing. I can imagine marketing and branding being top concerns for managing your company. Which strategies have been the most successful and why? Well, there's a, marketing is a tough uh, measurement. Um, frankly, uh, it's almost impossible to measure marketing. Um, but uh, our kind of go-to-market strategy is to cover a multitude of, of media uh, opportunities. Uh, you know, so social media, um, uh, television, radio, uh, billboards. Uh, we, we do a little bit of everything, um, and the 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 driver for us is almost always taste because I mean obviously we're 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 a food product and and we're a we're a treat we're 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 a fun experience so we we promote uh, great tasting good experiences um, and and uh, and and then beyond that um, it's it's quality it's ingredients it's uh, things that would surround that, you know, it's friends, uh, atmosphere, uh, like I said, uh, games, family reunions, that sort of thing. So basically it's this whole idea of um, anytime you're thinking of something that really tastes good and you're thinking of um, uh, uh, experiences of where you can have something that really tastes good, that's, that's kind of what we're part of. There comes a point for many entrepreneurs where they begin to look at succession. 
Is this something that you have considered? And if so, what are your thoughts on doing it right so that the company's legacy lives on for generations? Yeah, well, it's, it's very important to us. We're obviously in the second generation now and not getting any younger. And, and uh, we have in our family, there's 70 of us uh, in our family all together. We have 10 uh, family members that work at our company. And uh, uh, we, we also have four family members who are on what we call a tracker program, which means they're being groomed for upper management. So we're very um, disciplined about that process. Uh, not only do we meet with the whole family on an annual basis to update them on the company, we meet with that group of 10 on a, on a, a twice a year basis to give them a little bit closer look at what's going on at the company. And then we meet quarterly with this group that's going to be, that's being groomed for upper management. And so uh, we have in our company a lot of interest in uh, bringing on the next generation. We're very intentional about it. There's criteria for them in terms of education. There's criteria for them in terms of completing to a satisfactory level different posts in our company. So they might manage this and manage that. And uh, so there's a track for them to work their way up. Uh, and by the time they uh, get into a leadership position, they will have experienced every, every part of our company. Um, so we're thankful for that. We, we think that um, we, we want the, 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 the business to be good for the family, and we also want the family to be good for the business. So um, that's, that's what we do. Thank you for speaking with us today. You're welcome.